The International Union of Food, Agriculture, Hotel, Restaurant, Catering, Tobacco and Allied Workers Associations, IUF, is an international federation of trade unions representing workers in agriculture and plantations, the processing and manufacture of food and beverages, hotels, restaurants, tourism and catering services, and all stages of tobacco processing. The IUF Africa had a conference in Lusaka 2006. And in that conference, we recognized that a lot was not done for women. And recognized that if you are an African woman, there are a lot of challenges. One, the multiple rules, their participation in decision making, and gender inequality were some of the issues that emerged from the conference. So we tabled this uh, discussion with the conference, and the conference adopted it. So 2007, IUF supported a program for 16 African countries. The objective of this women's project is to promote their participation in trade union to defend their living and working conditions at their workplace and in the society at all. From its founding in 1920, international labor solidarity has been the IUF's guiding principle. This principle is implemented through building solidarity at every stage of the food chain global action to defend human, democratic and trade unions' rights, and international union organizing within transnational companies, TNCs. When we started this program in 2008, we saw that women participation was very, very low. One, they were not confident. And for that matter, we decided to put up specific programs to address those issues of women equality at workplace, better maternity protection, better health and safety for women, and the end to sexual harassment and violence against women, which were some of the challenges that we identified. So we decided to put in specific programs which focus on education and training, uh, conferences, uh, campaign, lobbying, to make sure that women are, are, are reached and then to improve on this their conditions of service. IUF exists to strengthen member unions through mutual support. It does this through assisting affiliates in recruitment and organizing drives and in conflicts with employers and governments, coordinating and implementing solidarity and support actions, combating all forms of discrimination and promoting equality at the workplace, in society and in the trade union movement ongoing trade union education programs to help build the strength and independence of affiliated unions, research and publications. Most of the things that the Women's Project is also emphasizing is women representation at all levels of the union structures. And that is starting from the local, national, regional and to international level. In 2007, IUF adopted a policy of 40% representation. So the Women's Project has been creating awareness around it and the, most of the union have amended their constitution to make sure that in all the structures, women are selected or elected into a position. Work is central to our well-being. And when we talk about work, we mean decent work for all. Decent work is defined by the International Labour Organization as work that is productive and delivers a fair income, security in the workplace and social protection of families, better prospects for personnel development and social integration, freedom for people to express their concerns, organize and participate in the decisions that affect their lives and equality of opportunity and treatment for all women and men. We have learned globally under IUF to have a campaign to improve on the working conditions of workers in the hotel, especially workers in the housekeeping sector. And we have this document that everybody is using as a guide to reach the hotel workers, the housekeepers, and look at their health and safety issues by using simple methodology to look for the information like body mapping to identify issues that affect their work. IUF has made sure that in the last one year, most regional trade unions have done a recommendable job by employing more young women who in turn recruit younger and especially women workers, as it is easy to relate. They also formed social media groups like Facebook and WhatsApp, where they would share the gender issues at the workplace, and also organized more trainings and workshops on gender issues. 
Their strategy was to involve male counterparts in women issues so that they would understand that this is a social and a community issue. 80% of our members are women, so we, gender equality and diversity has always been in the forefront of the work in our union, both um, promoting women to take up positions uh, in the union, but also um, uh, trying to raise the women's wages, which is lacking behind the men. IUF makes sure that women empowerment goes hand in hand with the provision of decent employment. Women are now confident. They are taking up leadership positions. I can cite an example that in Uganda, even at country level, women are recognized. Though they are still few in the leadership positions, but we have the speaker now, we used to have the vice president, and at our workplaces, in our constitutions, we have that at least one third on each and every committee must be women. So now what we need to have is just to put confidence in women, to sensitize them, and also to develop their skills so that they can be able to take up leadership positions. Also men, we are sensitizing them to support women. Because in the past, men were not even supporting women. When a, ma a woman comes up, they say, no, 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 no. A woman can't take up the leadership position. But right now, men are being sensitized, and we are trying to see that at least we get a good number of women in the leadership positions. The many challenges the African woman undergoes denies her rights, decent employment, and social justice. Most of the legislations do not recognize domestic workers as, as workers, and that's one of the areas which we are fighting for that. Domestic workers play a very big role in the society, socially and economically. Social, as you can see, I'm a woman, I bear children, and it is their role to take care of their children while I'm at work. And in so doing, because I'm at work, I can do the work very easily, very leisurely because somebody is, is working at my home. Economic hours, they play a very big role because they also contribute to the growth. But also, they make their, their employers to work very efficiently because they are at home working. Now, coming to Occupational Health and Safety, National Health Insurance Fund, uh, Social Security, these are areas which we are saying we need to educate first the domestic workers so that they demand. They negotiate, and that's why now we are telling them we need to build the capacity of their negotiation skills before they are employed. They should negotiate for their social security. They should negotiate for other occupational health and safety issues. Working women must get at least three months leave plus annual leave, and the men given paternity leave of 14 working days, and also sick leaves, which are fully paid for by the employer while on full salary. One of the things... Uh, and which our women are proud of is when they become pregnant. They have a resting room there, inside there. They have beds where they can sleep at any time and no one is supposed to bother uh, or, or disturb this, this employee. Okay? When she feels uncomfortable at work, she can walk in there and rest. And no supervisor can question. Because all this time for us we treat like a time which this employee, the productivity, uh, comes down and therefore she needs time to take care of the baby and all that and uh, take care of the pregnancy. So they have that, uh, that, that privilege. Uh, but also, when they go on maternity leave, we pay them. There are, there are, there are no more salaries and uh, most of the time what we do, and that has been the practice and the policy of uh, Kilflora, all these uh, uh, who go for the maternity leave, they go for four months. Okay? They are away for four months, okay? Why? Because we believe uh, if a person delivers well, the first, uh, uh, at least uh, it should have three or four months with the baby before coming back to work. And that's what I've said before now, when they come back to work for almost one year and more, they only work half day. The rest of the day, they go back home to take care of their uh, children. I think what, what the trade unions here are doing in promoting or trying to uh, get ratification for the ILO Convention 183 in uh, countries to um, in try to include better maternity leave in the uh, CBAs is of course the way 
trade unions can work to promote this. And I think there are quite good examples in a lot of countries here that you, they have managed to successfully uh, increase the maternity leave and also the possibilities for women to breastfeed during working hour or working days. There should also be consideration to mothers who give birth to twins or more children to be given more days. It is now a common situation that mothers develop complications when delivering. There should be an additional two weeks. After resuming duty, mothers should be given at least two hours break daily to go breastfeed. Yeah, this is something that we have identified by ILO a Convention on Maternity Protection, which is 1183. And it specifies the importance for women to be better treated in order to, to handle their issues at the workplace, to become productive. And for that matter, the conventions emphasize with a woman to have a 14 weeks maternity leave after she has returned to work. The convention is emphasizing that she has to be given a space to breastfeed these children. And it's also advocating for better childcare facilities at the workplace because we, it is presumed that if the woman has the child closer, she concentrates on her work and then she also concentrates on the child. And we are looking at this distance from the level of economic, social and health issue. So it has been one of the things that the Women's Project, project has been advocating for. The workplace and schools, though an effective refuge from exploitation and infection, has sadly become a site of non-consensual sexual activities. Rape, sexual abuse and intimidation by male staff and pupils combined with the exchange of sex with the older men for job opportunities and in the case of school-going girls, school fees, presently make the school a dreaded and fearful place. Community acceptance of this as normal must change. Because of the scarcity of jobs, most men who are the perpetrators take advantage of this and the act on it towards young ladies coming. So what I want to say or I would say is that we have to create the awareness that your life is yours. That job that that man is doing is not for him. The job he was also employed. So therefore, he cannot use that to intimidate you. You have a right. So we have to create the, that awareness among ladies and even the young ones coming. That look, report, report sexual harassment. It's a crime. It's a serious crime. You need to report it. A policy of providing scholarships would avert the need for young girls to find older men to finance their schooling and legislation should protect workers at the workplace. I think it's very important for the union to uh, listen to women and the stories about uh, gender-based violence that they can um, be exposed to in their homes or by relatives or by their husband or something uh, because it affects them in their workplace, both mentally and also physically. The law is in place, but then how they do, do you work with the law and uh, how, it's in, how it is in reality is something completely different, I think. Because uh, if a woman uh, is abused of sexual violence or something, uh, there, is all, there can be a situation where uh, there is like a word against another word. I mean, the man doesn't tell the truth and... Uh, I mean, one person saying one thing and one person saying another thing. So you always, or uh, very often you end up with two different stories and nothing happens after that. Pressure must be brought to bear upon lawmakers to use law as an agent of social change. However, it must be noted that for laws against rape and incest and family law relating to the age of marriage or divorce to be successful, they must be accompanied by simultaneous changes in social and cultural values. Violence against women, sexual harassment and all these other, other problems that women have, it's so deeply entrenched in our society um, that both men and women think that is the right thing because it is so deeply entrenched. 
So um, changing attitudes and changing behavior um, is very hard and it's something that you need to work on. So I think with regard to sexual harassment, although it's widespread, um, it is a disease that is uh, embedded in our society, uh, we are making gains. The fact that it is because it's uh, so highly publicized is already a gain because in the past we did not talk about it. It wasn't an issue. It was regarded as a joke. If you say you were sexually harassed, people will say, are oh, you making a joke? Um, she's not right in her head. Ah, she, you know, they would have all sorts of stories. But nowadays, people, when you talk about you being sexually harassed, people actually listen to you. The communities must therefore accept and decide to enforce such laws and place pressure on their members to change. This must also sound an urgent alarm. This is the unheard scream. My mother, my mother was a kitchen girl. My father, my father was a garden boy.